In 2020, we made the huge decision to sell our home in the lower 48 and move north to Alaska to live a way of life free from the hustle and bustle of big city life. Join us here as we share our everyday adventures living free in Alaska. We just, uh, I just went in, I installed a new camera and that's how I knew that one of my little ladies was leaving me a butt nugget. But uh, it was one of my Dominiques right there. But let's go see what she left. I'm so excited. She's leaving me. Oh, there we go. Right there. Just laid and still warm. So these are wooden eggs uh, with a little poo on it. But uh, I put that in there so they know not to uh, peck and break their eggs. But yep, she just left me that. So pretty exciting. Love it. Ah, ah! Is this your baby? Thank you. Thank you. Well, happy second day of fall. Today is Sunday, September 24th, and I just can't believe fall is here. Actually, fall has been here for a very long time already, 
it seems like we didn't even have a summer. Um, it was just cold, wet. In fact, uh, the meteorologists say this is our wettest year on record ever since 1952 when record keeping began. So it's been a really harsh summer after a really hard winter. So I'm really hoping next winter goes a little nicer for us, but it's hard to tell. But I thought it's been a long time. Seems like we say this a lot. It's been a long time since we've been in front of the camera. So I'm gonna just show you what we've been up to. the uh, last of the trees right here. I cut down. That's the third tree. Cut down today. Yesterday I spent a bunch of time clearing out our tunnel. What do you think? Our alder tunnel. I got, I'm going to take down that tree in the middle of the road. That's kind of in the way. But We liked it. Eh, it's in the way. Anyway. Hey, it's uh, way past wood gathering season. So I'm finding really nice dead standing spruce which is very dry and ready to burn. So cutting it up into sections now and I'll take it up above and split it later. And uh, yeah, gotta stack that woodshed. So yes, I brought the camera out. Yeah, hi. It's been a while, hasn't it? It's been a little bit. I was telling them how this is the second day of fall. And yeah, uh, yeah I was just showing a couple of our little projects like the chicken coop. Uh, that was not a little project. <laughs> no, it that was, was a not. Pretty big undertaking. I showed your wood shed. And yeah. How full it's getting. It's getting. Mm -hmm. Yep. And uh, now, oh, I showed him your lawn. Uh, yeah. Our lawn. Why is it all mine? I mean, this is our house. This I said our. our. I know. But. We seeded that in the spring back in May, and I think it turned out pretty good for the first summer. Uh, considering the, considering we didn't put topsoil down we didn't really take the rocks out all, all the rocks out you know there it's it's gonna do what it's gonna do and it'll be much better than the mud that was there before and it rained all summer long so it was nice to have the grass and, and the dogs yes. really liked it a lot and uh did their thing in the lawn and 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 wasn't nearly as muddy for them i'm sorry this light isn't the best as he said we're in a tunnel yeah but it's uh, kind of a natural tunnel with these trees overlapping the roadway or trail Yep. But I wanted to cut this trail down. I, I knew this was here, and there was quite a bit of overgrowth in this little area here. It's actually an old, old roadway um, that continues on both ways in a distance, for a distance. I cleared what was in our property. Yeah. Um, and we'll use it as an ATV trail and probably a snow machine trail in the wintertime. And maybe eventually make connect all the way down to the swamp down behind us. Very cool. So. All right. Well, I just thought I'd come down and get a little update and see what you're up to. That's what I'm up to. These, uh, these spruce trees are a pain in the butt. There's so many little branches on them. Yes, it is nice to have. So you don't have to hear me? What? Can't hear you. <laughs> <laughs> With this being our third winter in Alaska, we have learned you must choose your time wisely in these few short weeks of fall, because if you don't, Mother Nature will take over and will remind you she is always in charge. With the leaves falling in the yard, 
frost under our feet and termination dust in the mountains. We know our time is short to get everything wrapped up before the snow changes the landscape to a brilliant white for a minimum of six months or more. Wood needs to be stacked, fields mowed, but for us, we had one major job that needed to be done before the snow flew. Our biggest challenge on our plate was finishing up painting the house trim so we could finally have the gutters installed before winter came. With no help from the professionals, we took on the task ourselves and got to work. This was no easy task. Our house has some very unreachable areas, but through perseverance, we got it done and just in time. And I have to say, it looks amazing. We may have hired out for most things on this build, but knowing we still had a part in some of its transformation means the world to both of us. With our chores done and the house trim finally finished, we had one ATV adventure left before the trails blanketed in winter snow. So we loaded up the General and headed out towards the hills of Chickaloon in search of some Alaskan fall beauty. In all, a total of 30 miles of backcountry trails were ridden in a little under 10 hours of fun with our friends. A campfire lunch besides a frozen mountain lake was enjoyed with moose chili and hot dogs on the menu. Oh, and I almost forgot, Gary harvested his first grouse. I still pinch myself that we call this place home. This fall, we've made the drive to Fairbanks on two separate occasions. The first to do an Arctic Circle adventure tour, we won at a travel auction earlier in the summer with our RVing to Alaska business. morning from Fairbanks, Alaska. Wow, I am so excited about what's about to happen today. We are going to take an adventure that is going to take us above the Arctic Circle. So we're super excited to share that with you guys and hope you enjoy the ride along. Well, today we've made it to uh, Northern Alaska Tour Company, and we're going to fly with Air Arctic up to Coldfoot, yep. and then take a, an amazing ride, a tour ride down from Coldfoot back down to Fairbanks, stopping along the way to see the sights. Um, Yukon River, the Arctic Circle is gonna be the big one we're gonna take a look at today. We've already been there once in 2017. 17. We crossed the Arctic Circle in our own truck, uh, so that was a cool experience. This will be something different because we're going to fly up there 
and then take the tour bus down. So yeah. it'll we're, be a lot of fun. We're with about 20 other people. Yeah. And uh, this tour is going to last about 12 hours. So it's like about noon now, uh, maybe 1230 or so. We're not going to get back here until like 2 o'clock in the morning. So, yeah. wow, it'll be a long day, but it's, it's going to be a lot. It's going to be worth it. A lot of fun. It's interesting. So um, everyone on the tour, but the two of us are going to be staying out even longer till 4 in the morning yeah. to see the Northern Lights. We get to see them every day. We see them all the time. So these, that's, these guys, it's, it's amazing. There's like 50, well, 12 people from Australia yep. here on this tour. So that's kind of cool. Tassieland. Ta uh, yeah, uh, ta uh, Tasmania. Tasmania, yes. So that's so, kind of cool. But yeah, I'm very excited. We're going to have uh, two meals on this tour. Mm -hmm. uh, not that that dictates anything, but they do. <laughs> they do give you the opportunity we'll to bring gone. your own food. We did, which we did. And a sack lunch and a dinner yeah. uh, that you can purchase separately. Right. But um, it looks like we're going to do a tundra walk as well. And um, mm, maybe not the best shoes for a tundra walk. <laughs> hey, I've we're done, used I've to done it. a tundra walk in flip flops, so it's okay. I can do it in these shoes. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but we're going to have a lot of fun. Yeah. And uh, we're going to take you along uh, along the way. Yeah, it'll be a great time, guys. All right. See you in the air. Oh, I got to fix my collar. Yeah, pop that you didn't collar. tell me I didn't uh, dress properly. <laughs> yeah, that, that happens a lot. I, I tell you, I'm talking all the time. Yeah. All right, let's go have fun and fly to above the Arctic Circle. See you.
we made it to Cold Fork. The weather's changed a little bit. High cloud deck and a little bit of wind. A lot of wind. Yeah, I, got, I think I heard our pilot say there was a 50 mile an hour plus crosswind uh, when we're up in the air. No, no, no. Thirdly, a 50 mile an hour did not crosswind at 4,000 feet uh, elevation when we were flying in. Uh, made for a little bit of a bumpy landing it, uh, with the mountains and all that. Well, not even bumpy landing, bumpy ride. Bumpy ride, ride yeah. yes. We uh, flew out of our seats a couple of times. Seat seat belts were needed. I was sitting <laughs> over that seat belt, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Like, all yeah. right. So, uh, great flight yeah. though. Uh, a little bit cloudy on the way up, so you couldn't see. It's a beautiful landscape. And now we're going to switch to the land portion of this and drive all the way back to Fairbanks. Yeah, it's a long drive. It's going to be six hours on the road. Or longer. 250 plus miles. So, yep. uh, look forward to it. It's going to be a lot of fun. Yep. We haven't been up here for seven, six years. So, it's going to be nice. Yep. And uh, our tour guide for this portion is Andy. And so, we'll be looking forward to see what he's got to tell us. Yes, absolutely. Well, welcome back to Coldfoot Camp. Um, we have been here six years ago, and it looks like this is a place to put stickers. And we knew this was a place to put stickers six years ago, and we actually found it. That's our Pow Hunter Travel sticker right there that we placed on this window way back when. <laughs> and it's still there. Isn't that awesome? That's really That's cool. Really cool. And yeah. we're going to have to put a new one because I have now an RVing to Alaska sticker. There you go. I'll let you do that. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> when in the furthest bar in the north, you have to have a beer. What are you drinking? <laughs> Unfortunately, it's a local South Central beer, Matanuska Brewery. <laughs> it's not Silver Gulch. It's not Silver Gulch from Fairbanks. <laughs> so, it's all right. Cheers. You do? Cheers. And on our tour, we got a sack lunch, so we're taking advantage of the downtime before we head back out and uh, eat a little lunch. So far, so good. So, I have my new sticker, and I'm wondering, should we cover Powhana Travels with Irving to Alaska, or do we stick it someplace else? The one thing is, on the glass is pretty safe. On the wood, not so safe. So I'm gonna stare, find a good place to put this, so we'll get to see it next time we come. All right, I decided I'm gonna do, I'm not gonna cover our old one. Instead, I think, I need your opinion. What do you think right there? It's not really covering anything fully. Sure, if you want to put it there, go for it. All right. Alaska 2023 is on the window. Coldfoot, population 34 during the last census, primarily serves as a truck stop at the midway point between Fairbanks and Prudhoe Bay along the famous Dalton Highway. There is not much to see or do in Coldfoot, but you can find a restaurant, a post office, a small number of overnight accommodations, as well as a small interagency visitor center serving the national parks and preserves in the Arctic region. It's kind of fun when you actually get to do something that you haven't done before. This is the first time in this visitor center, so I think we're gonna go in and enjoy and see what it's all about. was originally a mining camp named Slate Creek and around 1900 got its present name when prospectors going up the nearby middle Fort Koyukuk River would get cold feet and turn around. 
But in today's times, it is said that the name is from getting cold feet about making the 240 some mile journey north to Dead Horse, the oil field town on the north slope of Alaska. With our visit complete in Coldfoot, it is now time to start our 260 mile journey back to Fairbanks via vehicle. Andy, our tour guide, did a great job explaining everything about what we were seeing out our windows, from explaining how the Alaska pipeline was built back in the 1970s to the importance of what the Hall Road is to the oil field workers in Prudhoe Bay today. One of our first stops of the day was at the Koyukuk River to watch some hunters prepare to set off to moose camp as opening day was one day away. And to our surprise, we showed how small Alaska can be with a statewide population of a little more than 700,000 residents. Uh, we just ran into a, an old, a neighbor of one of our friends uh, and We still can't believe that we ran into our best friend's next door neighbor some 550 miles away from home. As we continue our journey south towards Fairbanks, more fall colors make themselves present and we also see signs of how brutal this road can be if not prepared for one of the most difficult highways in North America. Oh. And if you can imagine, right, that axle is tied into that expensive tow to get that back to Fairbanks. I mean, I'm talking a few thousand dollars. No place. <laughs> Did you know that just 70 miles or so north of Coldfit is the last spruce, or tree for that matter, you will see along the Dalton Highway due to its latitude and extreme weather that just doesn't foster growth? Thankfully, today we are headed south, and as we continue down the road, the vegetation gets bigger and brighter with vibrant fall colors. This is why we chose to come near the end of the season to see these magical colors pop against the Arctic tundra. After about two hours or so, we arrived at the famous Arctic Circle. Thanks to Northern Alaska Tour Company, making sure we knew exactly where that invisible line was. Arctic Circle, 2023, September 9th. You ready? Oh, yeah. All, right. All right, where should we go? We're going to go right here. There we are. Arctic Circle, 2023, back of the sign. Made it back again. I don't think we put a sign, oh, a sticker up here last no. time. Okay, I gotta go potty. Okay, look at that. That right there. That's the Arctic Circle sign right there. Second time. Second time up here in six years. Kind of cool. A little different this time. We're not driving. We're riding along, going, going for the, uh, going for the ride. So it's a lot of fun. Um, great day. Yes. Beautiful weather. Could be a little bit more sunny, but. That's all right. It's still nice. We picked a great time of year to go up here and do this. This is September 9th. Fall colors are, I would say, almost full, full, on, full on beauty right now. Yeah. This is great. If you can do this trip in, in September, it's magical. Absolutely. Yeah. Loved it. Arctic Circle. We did it again. It would have fun. All right. Well, now we're going to switch tour vans and get on a bigger bus and head down the, uh, the Yukon River camp which is coming next yeah big old yukon river all right let's go
continued our long drive back to Fairbanks, we soon were losing our daylight. By the time we arrived at the Yukon River, it was sunset and the remaining six hours of our tour would be made in the dark. Although that was a bit disappointing, there's nothing we could do about that as we know September is when we really start to lose the light. And on this particular day, sunset was in the seven o'clock hour. After a little bit of a bus ride, we've made it down to Yukon River Camp. We're going to have a little bit of dinner here. We get some burgers and fries and enjoy a little uh, sit down hot meal here. It'll be nice. Our second trip to Fairbanks was at the end of October, and this time it was mostly for business, as we planned to attend the Alaska Travel Industry Association's annual conference. As you can tell, the weather is changing quick, and the termination dust is no longer just dusting the landscape. Winter is coming, and it's not even November yet. Welcome back to Fairbanks. We had a blast at our conference and it was a great opportunity to make some amazing tourism connections within our great state for our business. And we even got to get in front of the entire conference and pitch an idea for the Alaska version of Shark Tank. He literally 20 apps a day. And what I hate is he's driving, yelling at, not yelling, he's asking me what to do. <laughs> Although we didn't win any funds, again, it was a great opportunity to get our business out to the masses. With all the business festivities over, who says you can't mix a little business with pleasure? So after all the activities were done, Gary and I headed back up the hall road to a little village at the end of the Elliott Highway where the hot waters of Manly Hot Springs were calling my name.
bet you can never guess where we are right now. Good luck. You'll never know. You'll never guess. What's that? What's that behind us? <clears throat> it's a slush river flowing. It hasn't hasn't frozen up yet, but it's getting close. This is one of the largest rivers in Alaska, not yes. the largest. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's about four hours from Fairbanks. Yes, where we are now. And even though this looks like really cold water, we're in a place where there's warm oh. water. Not too many people have been here. We don't promote it very much in RVing to Alaska. Because we've never been, we here. been here. Until now. And now here we are. This wouldn't be the month to do it either. <laughs> <laughs> Not in RV. Uh, but welcome to Freeze Up in Manly Hot Springs. Right. This is a old community that was developed around the turn of the century, 1908 or so. And uh, they discovered some hot springs here. And there was a bunch of mining operations. And they wanted to take advantage of the hot water. and rest their weary bones uh, after working in the mines and such. And Isn't that weird seeing the background move behind it is, us? It is, it is a little bit weird, it's yes. It's kind of mes yeah. mesmer uh, mesmerizing. mesmerizing. Yeah. It's kind of like a conveyor belt, right. just, I, I don't know, it's just really, really right. cool. And we have, <laughs> we have Alpen Glow. Alpen Glow, well, yeah, we're waiting <laughs> sunset. for the sunset. Sunset, the golden the hour. So this is uh, the Tanana River uh, right behind us. Uh, just outside of uh, Manly Hot Springs. And we wanted to come out here before dinner for sunset and uh, look, get a, get a sight of the river and watch the sun go down. Um, we did not know what to expect when we got here and we were very pleasantly surprised. This is pretty amazing. It's pretty cool. We're only here for one night. This is just a R&R &R, uh, wind down period from a very busy week of networking right. at the Alaska Travel Industry Association's annual conference. It's a mouthful, but it was a lot of fun. It was. We <laughs> met a lot of cool people, a lot of really awesome local businesses, yep. and we talked so much. We just needed some hot water and uh, just each other for a couple of days. Maybe we should have booked two nights, but we only have one. So, <laughs> hey, better than none. I knew it was four hours above Fairbanks, and from Fairbanks home, it's another six hours. And I didn't want a 10 hour plus drive home. Well, no. So we good. broke it up. Yep. So, hey, let's turn it around a little bit and you guys can see how the slush and ice and everything's flowing down the river right now. It's pretty amazing. It's like a little mini, it looks like it must have been frozen upstream a bit and then somehow it broke through again. Well, it was before. a warmer day. It was like yeah. 24 degrees today. So I think there was some, some freezing previously and then it looks like it broke open again. And uh, it's actually moving pretty quick. Well, it's a pretty swift it's river. It's a pretty, pretty good sized river. And you can see this cut bank right here. You know, this is, this, this is all a steep ledge going down to the river. The water can get up this high during runoff. So there's, there's, there's a lot of volume change here. So cool. Yeah. But when you come into Manly Hot Springs, there's uh, not a whole lot here. Listen to that carve into the bank. It slows down and causes other, other reactions. There's not a whole lot here. Um, we actually have our little Airbnb at the Hot Springs area and uh, getting ready to cook us a, a steak for dinner. I was looking around for salt and pepper. He didn't find any salt and pepper. So in the post office, there's a combined post office and a, and a convenience store, small. And uh, we get down there at 5.15 and the doors was unlocked, but she closed the till up and everything like that. However, she didn't have salt and pepper to sell if we were even to want to buy it. <laughs> <laughs> she had a big, a big, big thing of salt, but no pepper. So, ah, so it didn't, it didn't work out. But Stacy saw the little salt and pepper shaker on top of the microwave for, you know, incidental uses, and so we sold some out of there. I'm like, we didn't steal. <laughs> well, we we asked. politely we asked. asked, "May we please take a little bit of salt and pepper?" And she said yes. yes. So we so, got our salt and pepper for the steaks. You. I'm not sure what kind of oil I'm going to use for the asparagus. We'll see about that. Oh. <laughs> but hey, it's going to be a great time. Yes, it and is. And this, oh, the sun's beautiful on us. It's, Look at that, the color. It's bright. It's really nice. <laughs> I look like I have a suntan. <laughs> All right. I'm cold. My hands 
I forgot my mittens. It's only, it's 20. It's 20, but it's Something chilly. Something like that. All right, final view of the sunset before we head back to our cabin. It's just so cool. Yeah. Powerful. Yeah, water. Water. It's something you don't want to mess with. Give it all the respect you can. That was really cool. I just watched a whole bunch of ice just slough up mm -hmm. when it collided. Let's see what happens right here. Won't be long and this will be completely frozen over and yeah. get a good base and people will be snow machining up and down this river. Oh yeah, major winter. Look, look at that. Oh, that one just broke in half. Oh, there wow. Yeah. And now it's and now two it's pieces. Two. Yeah. And now you see why they're all roundish. As they, they flow through and bump into each other, they create round edges. Very cool. Yeah, it is. All right. Manly Hot Springs, we've made it. One more road off the list. In fact, uh, now with us going to Manly, we have only one more road to complete, and that is the Steese Highway to Circle. Circle. Right. So other than that, we have been on every highway in, uh, in Alaska. major road in Alaska. The Steese and Circle is not going to happen on this trip? No, no, no. 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 We're no. back to Fairbanks tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. So this is just a, a little R&R &R for us. A quick getaway. Much Needed and well deserved. Absolutely. We love Alaska. It's beautiful, amazing. All right. Well, that's it, folks. We are all caught up with our catching up the vlog videos. From here on out, it is pretty much real time. I believe I have one or two videos that I produced on our other channel that were from this winter that I need to re-upload onto this channel. And next week, I will start our 2024 vlogs in real time starting when our pup spirit had some medical issues and had to go to the vet and of course we'll bring you everything with gary and his knees so thanks for watching we absolutely love our new channel and all the fine folks that we've met through it and we look forward to continuing to bringing you our everyday lives here on living free Alaska.